I'm gonna attempt to do today something that's never been done on YouTube before. We're gonna correctly splay our trimmers for our V-Luxes. This is where the V-Luxes are going on this bad boy. This is my car lodge. It's gonna be an office slash guest room with a shower room. We've got three V-Luxes. We've got two massive ones and one smaller one. Quick disclaimer, I don't have a trade. I just have a go. I am a proper self builder. If you wanna follow the vlog, check out my channel, subscribe. We're taking inspiration from these bad boys. Now, the reason why we're taking inspiration from these is because it was basically my job to sort these out. It shouldn't have been, but if you watch the vlog, you'll find out what happened. Had I have left it up to the builders or the carpenters or anything like that, they would have just squared these off. Now, these carpenters, builders, whatever you want to call them, they can't be asked to figure this stuff out. They just whack them in and then do square ends. They don't splat them. They just don't know how to do it. I don't know whether do they know how to do it. I have no idea. There's nothing on the internet that shows you how to do it. There's no, even from V-Lux, Key Light, whatever, don't show you how to do it properly. These ones that I've got in here, I kind of half figured it out. I told them exactly what to do, and then I had to do a bit more as well. And it's kind of worked. It hasn't got a proper splay on it, it hasn't horizontal and vertical, but it has got splays. It doesn't really matter too much in here. We've got so much of a big expanse in here. The ventilation is going to be a proper ventilation system and all the ceilings are forward. One of the reasons why you have the correct splays is for ventilation. And then you don't have any spots where you're going to basically collect moisture. It's a good idea to have loft conversions as well. It gives you that little bit more of headroom at the top, especially if you have top hung windows. We did try and do it before. Me and Dan, we done our own loft conversion. One of the things, one of the very few things that we didn't do ourselves was the V-Luxes. We got someone in that was accredited and said, we want it done, so we have displays. He didn't do it with displays. He didn't do it properly. So this time, I'm doing it myself. Well, I'm doing pretty much loads of stuff myself. We're going to do it properly. On here, it was kind of okay because we had counter battens, basically. Big 50 mil chunky stuff. That, that's where the actual windows sit on. So that was okay. However, on a lot of stuff, you don't have the counter patterns. And V-Lux and Keylight and all of the window companies, all of their instructions have counter battens. So how are you meant to do it any other way? And they don't really tell you how to do it properly anyway. So I spent the whole day, almost, all, all morning, figuring this out. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Let's go and take you over. Right, I'm starting from scratch, so it's probably a little bit easier for me. You might be trying to put one in your own roof or something. You could probably apply the same kind of principles that I'm gonna do, but because I'm starting from scratch, I'll show you exactly what I've done and why I've reached, obviously, the point that I have. First of all, these are the ends of my rafters. We've strung a line underneath so we can know exactly where this fascia is going to go on here. Now, from that, I then put this batten across because we haven't cut these off. That is going to be the end of my rafters with my fascia, and then I'm going to work my way up. Okay, so there's my tiles. They are going up here. This is where my fascia is going to go. So I'm getting a 25 mil fascia. And then up here, I've put that little black bit because I'm actually putting these vents in. The tile needs to come 45 mil past, 40 to 45 mil past the fascia. So you've got your eaves tile first. That's going to sit there. That means that my first baton is here. And then my second baton is going to be here because the next tile's up sit exactly there so i know from here basically where my face is going to go up to the top of my next baton is 175 mil and i've used that to basically go over here and then mark up exactly where my battens are going so i've marked it on this bit of a staff and i've basically done 100 mil gauge all the way up top when I say gauge, that's basically from one from the top of the tile baton to the next tile baton. The reason why I'm doing 100 mil is because I've got plain tile. You might have to work out your own gauge. It depends on what tiles. I can do 100 mil because it doesn't really matter when you get to the top. Where the ridge tile sits over, it's fine. That's the situation there. Let me show you my windows. Biggest windows in the world. You can get slightly bigger ones than this, but 
I couldn't get the flashing for it. So these are 114 wired, 140 high. And you have to figure out where you put in the brackets. So obviously these are the brackets. You get two positions. You can go for a blue line, which is here, or red line, which is here. You can't really see the red line on here. I was in a bit of a panic. I was like, what the bloody hell's going on? Obviously, Velux want to save a bit of money on paint. And they just do a tiny, tiny red line here that is really faint. They should just do a red line here, but there you go. So you order your flashings depending on what tiles you get, and then it gives you a code. It's basically color coded red or blue. Now my tiles my and my flashing kit is red, even though it's not in these codes here. I was in a bit of a panic trying to figure out what's going on because I've got EDP and none of these say EDP. None of this says EDP, none of this says EDP, nothing. So you have to use your brain sometimes to just figure it out. I opened up my flashings. Because I've got plain tiles, I've got these little things. They give me the fear. I hate flashings because I had to do the flashings on that, even though it wasn't my job. Okay, so first things first, always try and buy your windows before you actually trim anything out because that will be easier that way. On my um, rafters, my doubled rafters, I've not done the correct spacing. I've just worked with what's there. So we're gonna do a little bit of a work around with that, but it's fine. Now, between the bottom, top of the bottom batten and the bottom of the top batten is how big your window is plus 45 millimeters. Now the reason why that is, is because you've got, you can fit the insulation collar around Plus, when you put the brackets on, there's it stands off by 20 mil. So it'll stand off by 20 mil at the top and the 20 mil at the bottom. And that's the reason why it's Y plus 45. Now, if you've done that, Y plus 45, this baton can move slightly in and out by five mil. Basically, if you butt it up against, you haven't, you've got that extra few mil. Now, because I'm doing these tiles, that means that my tile can fit there in between. So that means I am gonna line up my window with a batten that sits correctly for this so I don't have to add extra battens or anything. So that was my first calculation, start of my adventure and hopefully you're gonna follow what I'm saying. Let's get up on the roof. Just quickly, so the battens. So it says, this is your top button. And you go horizontal from there, this is your bottom button, and then that's vertical from there. So your window sits outside of it like that. So this is my little drawing for you. Now, this is my gauging button. So if you can imagine, every hundred, that's the top of the button, which is the reason why I've marked this on here. That's obviously I can move it about and do the other ones. So I've chosen this button that's essentially going to go here as where my first button is. So the bottom, the top of the bottom button is going to go here. So the window is going to sit here. Now the reason why I've chosen this one is on tape measure. For it to be a fire regulation, a fire escape, it needs to be the top of the actual window is between 800 and 1.1 meters you can see some stuff that says 60 600 millimeters but that's too low it's a, a hazard for kids and stuff so 800 to 110 now the reason why i've done it up to 110 as much as i possibly can is so we've got headroom at the top now the actual window is going to sit here this is where the actual bracket's going to sit and it comes roughly 60 mil below 60 mil above that's the reason why i put this block on so i can make sure that basically it fits and that's below 110 that means between here and here is about 20 ish mil so that's where my wind is going to sit the bracket's going to sit here what you then do is according to the instructions you take a line from here vertically down that will bring to here and then from here you go obviously at 90 degree to your actual rafters across here 
that means your your trimmer your double trimmer sits here now that means that if you then want to splay your window because it's got the groove here for the plasterboard you could in theory go all the way down here but you can have it vertical this way this is how I'm actually going to set it out so this is my plasterboard these are my double trimmers that means that this is set back enough now the bit that nobody shows you and the bit that I'm making up is this bit here now if you didn't have this bit here you've got your double raft and double trimmers between here and here that's a massive space and these little piddly things are gonna have to hold your window granted it is in the corner so it's probably at the strongest spot but I don't think that's very good and you've got flappy McFlappy felt that's just gonna fall down here it hasn't got nothing to go through so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in this here now lucky enough this is 150 this is exactly the same as this 150 so I've got them left over and then that button can sit on top all the way across it's got more support it's clear of the window so when I come in to do my plasterboard in, I can always put in blocks here if I need to or even insulation I've done insulation before as well on my old loft conversion so that's the situation that's how you work it out that's how it's laid out that's how you do it properly so it's the same process up here that's my, where my window's going to go this is the top of the button well this is the top button bottom of it there so where my actual buttons finish they're going to be here so what I might do is just above the window is put in a 50 by 25 button instead of a 38 so same again that's that you then take it horizontally this means that's where your actual double trim is going to go and to stop your felt and your lack of support you put in this as well so that's going to run all the way across this is going to run all the way across as well you can see this is where my head is that's where it's going to finish up there so we've got plenty of room and then bigger people can obviously come and have a nice look out the window you're not smashing your head off anything normally obviously if it was squared off you wouldn't have that at all and it wouldn't be very good would it that was quite a lot of explaining but if it helped you smash the like button if you want to see me actually do it then carry on watching we're going to cut them we'll sort it out we'll whack it in we'll get it done next day we're going to start cutting these out i've marked everything out this is the second v-lux it's the same principle the trimmers are going to be cut out of 145 millimeters by 45 millimeters that's six by twos in old money these rafters are slightly bigger so it's not going to finish exactly but we're going to line up the top to make sure everything's proper so i've marked this one and i've marked this one so i'm going to take the top mark of each one we're going to put the level one and then we're going to get straight across all the way we're going to mark this one here and this one here these are the ones that we're going to cut so if we get our square and then we mark this and then we're cutting out this section here and that's where the trim is going to go this is the first one that we're cutting out you'll notice that we've put these across here that's to support these rafters once we cut out the middle section so we've done that same at the bottom as well obviously you'll be doing this if your roof is already tiled and probably put in something a bit more substantial but we haven't really got any weight here so it'll be fine we've measured our trimmers between the double rafters do that before you do anything else especially if you put in noggins in between here i've learned that lesson off of my other roof because the carpenters fucked it up now we're going to nail these together So a lot of people put in joist hangers at the end here i just think that it looks untidy and i don't really like it so i use timber structural screws
and we just rang a couple of nails in as well just in case Dad's just going to cut the plank that's going to go across to here. He did already cut these, but I made him cut them out, some scraps that I'd already used for shutting them for concrete, but I decided that I don't like the look of them. They're a bit split as well, so he's cutting me a new one. And just remember, obviously, the bits that you cut out here, you can use. I forgot all about that. So that's the reason why we had extra wood, so I can make him cut it again. Look down fucking tools. What? Making me cut shit again. Yeah, but I, you said that I can't say that I, I made you cut it again. <laughs> say what you want, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the where's, talent here. Where's the, the talent. hammer? Where's what? the hammer? The hammer? You've got your own hammer. Yeah, where's it's mine? It's like your pencils. Your hammer's where you left it, over there. My hammer is where I always What hammer? Here, would you like my hammer? That's the orange one. Where's my nice one? But this one's got... The walk written on it. It's obviously better. <laughs> you didn't get your nice one out. You keep your nice one for good for when people come round. When the queen comes round. <laughs> Tea cake and a nice hammer laid out. Can I have some more nails, please, sir? If you're going to be in charge of the nail gun, get your own nails. No, 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 no. You don't let me have the nails. You ration <laughs> them. And then you give me all this split crap ones, which makes me look like crap. When I'm shooting. Can you wang a nail through that nice knot there? <laughs> Why don't you just turn it over? <laughs> so I don't have to put one through the knot. I'm saying that's a... <laughs> you just... <laughs> no, it is an open... <laughs> you can fit that in. Pushed it down a bit. I know because that's why I said put the hammer underneath it a little bit. Go on. There you go. Right, so what do you, you are you going in with? I'm going to screw that with a screw, yeah. Are you fixing to this as well or not? Yeah, I'm going through the back here. Yeah. Into and the... the side, yeah. I'll do the sides as well, yeah. Oh. What should I go? One fifties. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Fine, it's, this isn't a structure, anyway, is it? No, it's just to hold a bit of felt, batten, and then the window. Do you want another one cut for that then? For the top? Yeah. Is that one mashed as well? Well, it's not. It's... Yeah, do a nice one. Should I do 150 through there or 200? Why don't we ask the people and they'll get back to you in a week's time? A week's time. Why don't you comment down below whether I should use 200 millimeter screws or 150 through this side bit? So, and then the in six weeks' like time, you'll see the video, and I always already have put 150s in. I'm going to put in it. I'll put another one in at the bottom. So there we go. So everything's lined up. We've done this one. And we've done that one over there. And with this just started raining so we've got to put the tarp back on do the runoff i'll do the small v-lux another day get in the v-lux what get in the v-lux 
Well, there isn't a Velux, is there? There's, well, a, there's a hole. In the hole, get in the hole. Right. Look at these couple of beasts. <laughs> 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 They're massive, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, we're going to leave it there. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, push the bell notification. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.